Hey guys, so first off, I want to congratulate, I believe her name is Cassandra, or is that the website I used to pick the winner? But anyway, uh, the person who won the contest, uh, we are in correspondence. She, sure, she chose the Liliana, of course, and that will open us up to a new contest. So put in the comment section below what you would like the new contest to be. I will tell you what I have available to me. I have the foil snap, which is from Innistrad. Uh, Lily was from Innistrad as well. And I have a unopened box of Masters 25. So it'll be interesting to see what you guys choose to do with it. Do you want one high value card with one winner? Or, or would you rather have 24 packs? How much is Masters? <laughs> it's been a while. A Master set I think is 24 packs and have different winners. Of course, I will cover the shipping, even if it's international, for something that is very expensive. I will probably have tracking. The Obviously, if you choose a snap, the foil snap, it will get tracking, just like the Liliana is going to have tracking and some type of insurance on it as well. So the rest of the video, I'm going to go ahead and critique myself and be very harsh. I feel like that's the video I want to make today. I honestly am very grateful and I don't know how to say this, but I feel like I have not done a good job for you, the subscribers. My Patreon stuff, I have to work a little harder on that one. Um, I apparently have a little bit more and I have to ship off your stuff and they will go out. Uh, I always try to aim for the 15th, which would be this Sunday. But I, would I was in Austin, I was in San Francisco, Thursday, Austin, just until it's 1.23 a.m. That's when I got back. I got to go back to work at 8 a.m. To uh, And a very interesting thing happened with one of the people we were, I was going to hire. Didn't work out. Very complicated situation. And, and at some point, you're just like, whoa, that's kind of crazy but not going to go into that on this channel at least i represent something that magic the gathering has kind of lost uh, i was thinking about like where am i in the magic youtubing arena i've been playing magic since i was in kindergarten uh, my first pack was beta i used to buy packs from radio shack and gamestop used to have packs I had a Wizard of Coast store in my mall, so of course that's where I went to FNM. Pretty big store too, next to JC Penney's. And I grew up with Magic. I grew up when Magic was not popular, it was not hip. Um, if you played Magic, you were bullied. Your English teacher would rip your cards because he thought it was St. Tonic. Your gym teacher would make fun of you. He would take your deck away. Um, you would play during... Uh, What's the period before homeroom where all the people getting on the bus, that's when you would play, you would play on the bus. Uh, playing magic meant you were by definition not cool. And the beauty of that was, hey, you play magic, I play magic, and you, got, you were just friends. So much of that has changed. And I, wanted, I made this video a few different times. I didn't know what the point of the video was until now it used to be that if i play magic and you play magic we would be friends then it became we at least had respect for each other now it's all it's pretty bad and i have been a participant in this behavior uh, now i i do believe that what i said is correct uh, i'm not going to go back on what i said my opinions are just that. It's my opinions. It's my channel. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not representing a, a team or a puker trade or monthly magic box. There's no one that can hold me accountable except for me. Yet, I do feel like that I have certain biases that a lot of you don't understand. And these biases come from 
being, you know, playing magic for so long. And it's not that I think I'm superior. It's not that I feel like I'm the old guard. If you told me in middle school that the most popular YouTube channel would be talking about sleeves and binders and $100 wooden deck boxes made from the Amazonian rainforest, I would think you were crazy. I would say, what? why did we need sleeves? Just enjoy the game. If you told me about MTG Finance, I would think that you're an idiot back then. I would think, wow, no. You know, if I need this card, then I'll ask my friend, and my friend would give it to me. And then if he, my friend needs a card, I'll give him one. And that's how trading works. We were using Inquest magazines that were a year old. And the prices were so out of whack that, like, it's so unreliable, right? But that was the only thing that we had as a pricing guide. Uh, I grew up without a cell phone. In middle school, I didn't have a cell phone. I think I got a cell phone the first year, of, uh, freshman year in high school. But that was only for like emergencies and to play Snake on. It was like Nokia. It was a Nokia phone. It was only to call my parents to pick me up from tennis practice and like other stuff like that. Activities. So today I look at the community. It's really divided. Um, there's a lot of issues that... And I'll, I wanted to make a video about givers and takers and... I thought this was the best video to do it because we're always going to have a contest. I know many of you um, would never have the opportunity to own a foil lily. Um, she's a beautiful card. That is a chase card. That's a card that once you have it, you're not going to want to let it go because it's the pillar of your community. You can show your friends, especially if it comes with all the videos, right? Like Lily has a video with what? 70,000 comments, 7,000 comments on it. And you can say you won. How many people can say they won a foil Liliana? Not that many, right? So there's givers and takers. And that's my main point. When I was younger, we all just shared cards. And if you needed this card and you needed this Pounting Jaguar, I hair, take it. I have an extra. If you need Terra, hey, take it. I have an extra. Oh, you need this card? Okay, cool. And even when we did trades, it was like, a bro price trade. I, I know bro is not like the not the uh, official Wizard of the Coast terminology, but you know, it's a friend. You know, it's a friend. And the beauty of playing Magic was, hey, you're a nerd. I'm a nerd. Let's be bullied together. And that sounds horrendous when, you know, I would say it today, but that's what it was. And that's how I grew up with Magic. I grew up with Magic all my life, pretty much. And now I see people using Magic to do stuff that I... So givers and takers, um, let me go back to that concept. When I was younger, people would just give cards away. They would be friendly with each other. Even there was a dude, his name was Kevin. I really didn't like him, but we both played magic. So we at least had a high level of respect for each other. And we played each other all the time. And we had, we had fun. Today... I look out in our community, especially our YouTubing community, and I see people who really just truly dislike each other. And the whole concept of Matt, the whole concept that you should give more than you take is totally gone now. It's take, 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 take. And I can talk about specific examples, but I don't want to get into too much of the weeds, but you guys know what I mean. There's certain members of our community that always take, they never give. They always take. And that's not how I grew up with magic. That's not what I remember. Even the concept of MTG finance is all about taking, right? Um, pack to power. You guys remember that? You open a booster pack, you get a crappy rare, and then somehow you trade your way up to a power nine. That's what people wanted to do. That's what people wanted to learn. And... Sharking, cheating people, uh, even magic cheating during games. Like, this is what people do. I, I just can't. I grew up where magic was, I don't want to say more innocent, but you really did truly have a community who looked out for each other. Um, I remember one time, uh, my friend Phil, there was a guy who was bullying um, Brendan or someone else. And 
he stepped in and he punched the guy and I thought he was a hero because I was like, yeah, he stood up for the magic crowd, which is like me, right? And then we used to play during lunchtime with my friend David and, you know, we just sat by ourselves and that's how I grew up. Um, now, when I went to NYU, I gave up magic for a little bit of time and then I became really popular. And same with law school, I was the head of my legal fraternity. And then same with uh, life now, it's, you know, people always want advice and marketing. Uh, they always want to hang out with you so they can get free marketing advice that you, otherwise you would charge them a lot of money. So I guess my, my want, my ask of you is please give more than you take in this community. If you see a new player, you know, give them some cards. It, doesn't, it means so much more to that new player than, than the cards mean to you. Um, if you have time, teach new players. If you have the ability, like a YouTuber, to use, I used to promote smaller channels all the time. I don't know why I don't do that today. Uh, it's really a mistake. When I look at two years ago, when I had the Lily contest, the Snap contest, and I look at today, I really have failed in that aspect. Um, I've kind of, no, I, I have not done a good job. Um, I have not done a good job promoting smaller channels. I have not done a good job uh, promoting the community. I have, um, as strange as it sounds, I think I just, I'm a remnant of what magic used to be. And when I look at what it is today, I just don't get it. No, I just don't get it. You have popular kids in Magic, and then you have unpopular kids in Magic. You have Tolarian saying that I'm going to block you because you don't have any Twitter followers. You got Weds, you know, all types of things going on there. Um, you have Frank, uh, Frank and Melissa, and Frank is cheating on Melissa with multiple people he meets. Like, you have cheaters. You have Alex Bacchini coming back over and over again. They can't get rid of the guy. You have uh, people being promoted who obviously are very toxic individuals and they're being promoted because they are the ins. They have the ins with uh, Wizards of the Coast. Like, if you watch the Wizards of the Coast documentary, it is fascinating because I, I guess I watched it and I probably saw something different from the majority of you guys. Magic should be a community that looks out for each other um, because it's every, it's used to be everyone who plays Magic versus everyone else in high school. That was what it was. Now you have people who, based on your subscriber numbers, based on your Twitter followers, based on who you are, they don't respond to you. They don't care who you are. And that's not the way it used to be. Uh, it's not the way I remember Magic and as we go more and more, as we go on and on, you know, my only one desire, my one desire from starting this YouTube channel, when I first started it, I had a new law student channel, which was one of the bigger channels at the time. And then I reincarnated myself into a lion, although MTG Shark was an option. That was the second option. I wanted to... I wanted to show you what magic was like when I grew up, when I was in middle school, when I was in elementary school, and even high school, and how awesome it could be. Uh, how, when you look at the live streams, you got big channels, you got small channels, and you have random subscribers, and they're all on live stream together. That's what magic was for me, and that was what magic was on YouTube for a long time. All right, who's doing the live stream today? All right, I got it. All right, everyone get onto live stream and just hang out for hours. We used to hang out for hours and hours on those live streams. I don't know. Something changed. And, you know, I am responsible for it. Uh, I am not. I think it is my job as an old guard to help new channels, especially those in MTG Finance. Um, promote them, let them grow, and eventually do a better job than I did. I've done.
um, because that's, I think, my duty. Uh, and that's something that I will take more seriously. I'm going to, once I get my streaming privileges back, I'm going to stream uh, on this channel. And I will invite other smaller channels to hang out and do stuff. And that way we'll get promotes. That's how we used to promote each other. It's, all right, who's the biggest channel? Okay, stream it. And then the smaller channels would all be on the stream too. I'm going to dedicate time out of my busy day to do this because I think it's what I want to do. It's, I, I know it's what I want to do. And I think it's good for the community. Um, I've been very, very hard to reach, very difficult to collab. And I think I'm going to set a hard time where I'll throw links out and you guys can join and stuff. And I'll dedicate time and resources to do it. I've just not done a good job um, accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish since that contest. I The whole point of the contest was I wanted someone really to smile. And I wanted to provide that to as many people as possible about the game of Magic. I have no idea how I ended up this way. <laughs> like, I, you know, the path that I got to where I am, if you explain it to me at that stage, I would say, okay, let's not get to 30,000. <laughs> anyway, long video. Bye, guys.